as you start to deploy more and more things inside your serverless repo, you need to manage how they are deployed. This video is going to show you how we can use Webpack to make sure that we're only putting the code that we need into our lambdas. Hi guys, I'm Sam with Complete Coding and in this video we'll be using Webpack and the serverless Webpack plugin to set up and configure our serverless repo so that when we deploy a Lambda, we're deploying just the code that we need to deploy. This doesn't make a huge difference right at the start, but as your serverless projects grow, you've got lots and lots of different code in there. And we don't want to deploy all of the code to every single Lambda. This will make your deployments quicker and it's a much more resilient way to design APIs. So let's jump into the code and we can see how we'll do all of this. If we go and have a look back in our AWS console, we can search for Lambda and then we will see that we have the my serverless project dash dev dash get user, which we can go into. And as we scroll down, we see here saying the deployment package of your Lambda was too large to enable inline editing. This happens because when we deploy by default with serverless, it uploads everything in the serverless repo into every single Lambda. While this works, it's not great. As you get more folders, as you get more lambdas, as you get more code, this is gonna become more and more bloated with files you don't need. What we can do to resolve this is use something like Webpack to package all of our code into smaller sections. So to get serverless to package up our lambdas into just what is needed, we need to add in a plugin called Serverless Webpack. We can do that in the plugins list. So it's a new plugin called Serverless-Webpack. To get this working, we also need to say that we want each of the lambdas to be packaged individually. That's as simple as saying package and then individually is true. We can now save this file. We've got a little bit more setup we need to do to get this serverless web pack working. First, we need to install the plugin. So we do that by running npm install dash dash save and then the name of the plugin which is serverless dash web pack. The next thing after this is installed, we actually need to install Webpack itself. So again, npm install dash dash save Webpack. Webpack is a way of combining code and putting it all into a single file that is recognized as an efficient way of reducing the amount of code you're uploading. So to get Webpack working, we also need to pass in some config for Webpack. So we need to create a new file in our repo called webpack.config.js. And inside this file, we need to write a module.exports And in this case, it's just an object. So there are a couple of things. The first thing is the target, which is what are we trying to compile down? And in this case, we're trying to compile down node because this is a node.js project and the mode. For us, we're going to be using production. This just means it minifies it as much as possible and then we can save this file. Now back in our serverless, uh, back in our terminal, we can run uh, SLS 
deploy again. And what this is going to do is it's going to now build it with Webpack. That's going to make sure that we only have the files that we need and that they're compressed down so they're a lot smaller than they were before. So again, I'll get back to you once this is all updated. So this most recent SLS deploy has finished. So we'll jump back into our console and have a look how things have changed. In this serverless get user lambda, we can refresh the page. And now if we scroll down to the function code, we can see that we have just one file. Here, this is the function. And what Webpack has done is it has compressed it down to make it as small as possible. So this is just a single file and a single line of code, which has everything that we've written inside it. Obviously, this isn't very good for reading, but it makes it much, much more efficient for uploading your lambdas. There is a way of getting the best of both worlds, getting the improved upload speeds and the separation of the code that is needed, but without having to minify it. What we can do is we can go back into our webpack config.js file and change the mode from production to none. If we save this, we're now saying that we are not running in a production environment, therefore we don't need to add the extra processing to minify the code. What we'll do now is go into our terminal and run sls deploy. And I'm going to do this just for one function, so minus f get user. And what this is going to do is it's going to use the new webpack config to deploy that get user function. We can now head over to our console and see how that has changed things. If we go into Lambda and it's last modified 14 seconds ago is the get user lambda function. And we can scroll down to our function code. As you can see straight away, this isn't the same as we saw before. At the start, there is all of this strange comment stuff. But this is just some information about webpack. If you scroll past that, you then get to the main section of code. Here you can see the handler, which is exactly what we have inside our actual code. So it's easy to read and understand. We have our data object and all of our logic. We also have our responses object, which is exactly what we would expect from responses. The way that Webpack has done this, it has copied the code from each of those files and basically put them all in one file, but without having reduced that down to the smallest size possible. This is actually the way that I run most of my deployments. And the reason for that is that if there is an error in your code, then it tells you there was an error on line 98. So you can look at the code and know what has gone wrong. With the minified code, it just says, that you've got an error on line one character 35,000, which is less than helpful. The one disadvantage of this, if you consider it a disadvantage, is that someone else could go into your Lambda and read your code. But if the only people that can access your AWS account are your colleagues or people you trust, then that should not be an, answer, uh, an issue because no one else can access the code inside your lambdas unless they have access to your account and access to read your lambdas, because lambda code is not public. Thank you for watching this video where we've learned how we can use Webpack and serverless Webpack to improve the way that we deploy our serverless application. We've done this so that only the code that we need in the Lambda is uploaded to the Lambda. This is a much more secure way of doing things and it improves our deployment. 
If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a like because it really helps the YouTube algorithm find that these videos are useful. And if you want to see the next video in the series, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on that bell notification so that you get notified when it comes out. And hopefully I'll see you again in that next video.